Welcome to the WebForms Training Video 3. In this video we will cover creating the Advanced Ship Notice, also known as the ASN, as well as viewing and printing your barcode labels. To create the Advanced Ship Notice, first find the purchase order with which you would like to work. If the purchase order with which you would like to work is in the bold status, you will first need to open it and view it before you can create your documents. To create the ASN, click on the Next Steps icon. Select the ASN. All forms are trading partner specific. Depending on your trading partner, some of the fields we cover may vary. In the upper left hand corner are two navigational tabs. You will need to fill out the fields on both of these tabs. To navigate between the tabs, click on the tab with which you would like to work. We will begin with the header tab. For all documents, any field outlined in blue is mandatory. You must complete all mandatory fields before the document can be sent. To enter your information, click on the field. If there is an arrow icon present, you must use this drop-down menu to fill in the field. Select the option you would like to enter. The next field, the shipment lading quantity, refers to the number of packs or pallets you are sending. Fields that are not outlined in blue are optional fields. SCAC refers to Standard Carrier Alpha Code, which is a four-letter code assigned to all transportation companies. Because the SCAC field is not outlined in blue, it is not mandatory. You do not need to enter that information here. You can, however, enter the information if you so choose. Using the drop-down menu, enter in the transportation type. Routing refers to the name of the carrier. The next mandatory field is the ship date. Using the drop-down menu, select the date that you will be shipping your product. Bill of lading, carrier pro number, and pickup reference number are all conditionally mandatory fields. Although none of these fields are outlined in blue, when you check your document, an error will appear informing you that you must fill in one of these fields. Depending on the information you have, choose the appropriate field. To ensure that you have filled out all mandatory fields, remember to scroll to the bottom of the page. Fill in the ship from information of your company. You will notice that the ship to information is sourcing in off of the purchase order. For the ship from information, if you would like to set a default, you can do so by following the instructions given in video 2. When you have finished filling out the mandatory fields, scroll to the top and click on the Order tab to proceed to the next page. At the top of the Order tab, you will see the PO repetition. If your trading partner allows for multiple purchase orders per ASN, you will add those purchase order repetitions here by clicking on the plus sign. To navigate between these PO repetitions, use the arrow keys. To delete any unwanted PO repetitions, select the repetition you would like to delete and click the trash can. If your ASN contains multiple purchase order repetitions, you will need to enter pack information for each purchase order. Next you will add your store information by clicking on the plus sign. If your advanced ship notice is divided by multiple store locations, you can add these repetitions by hitting on the plus key, then selecting the store number 
with the drop-down field. This purchase order only has one store repetition. If your ASN contains multiple store repetitions, you will also need to add pack information under each store repetition. Depending on the trading partner, the repetitions on your ASN order tab may appear differently. To enter the pack information, click the plus sign. Next, you will select single or multiple item per carton or pack. Single item per carton refers to one SKU per carton. This may include multiple items, but they must all have the same SKU number. For example, if you are shipping 100 apples in a carton, that is still a single SKU carton. If you are shipping more than one SKU or type of item per carton or pallet, select multiple item per carton. For example, if you are shipping 50 apples and 50 oranges all in one box or pallet, you will select multiple items per pack. In this example, we will select single item per carton. Click on the plus sign under item info to add your item. Select the item you would like to add and hit OK. If you have selected single item per pack, you must make sure you only have one line repetition under the item info. Be sure to fill out all mandatory fields in the item repetition. If you have selected single SKU under pack information, you can create multiple cartons in one pack repetition provided that the quantity per carton divides evenly into the shipped quantity. In this case, we will enter a quantity per carton of 101, thus generating 10 cartons. The form will divide the shipped quantity of 1,010 divided by the quantity per carton of 101 and will calculate that there will be 10 cartons of 101 items per carton. If the shipped quantity is not evenly divisible by the quantity per carton, you will need to create two separate pack repetitions. For example, if you are shipping this line item with a quantity per carton of 100, you will change the shipped quantity to reflect the total number of items being shipped at that quantity per carton. Here you will see we are shipping 1,000 items at a quantity of 100 per carton. The form will now automatically calculate 10 cartons of 100 items per carton. We will now make a separate pack repetition for the remaining items. Remember, to create a new pack, you will need to hit the plus under Pack Info. Select Single. the plus under the item info and select the same item as before. It is important to note that if your form is not item tracking, you will need to change the shipped quantity to reflect only the remainder. In this case, that will be 10. The quantity per carton will also be 10 for this example. The form is calculating that you are shipping 10 items at a quantity of 10 items per carton, thus generating one carton for this particular repetition. You may notice that it says two of two under pack information. This does not reflect the total number of cartons. Rather, it reflects the total number of pack repetitions we have created. In our first pack repetition, we created 10 cartons of 100. In our second pack repetition, we created one carton of 10. We have now created 11 cartons, shipping all 1,010 items for this particular line item. To create the next pack repetition, hit the plus sign under pack information. In this repetition, we will be including all three remaining items. We will select multiple item per pack. 
Hit the plus sign under Item Info to add the items. If you press on the control key while selecting the items, you can select them all at the same time. When you've selected the items, click on the OK button. For a multiple SKU pack repetition, the shipped quantity must match the quantity per carton for each individual line item. This pack repetition is generating one carton containing the full shipped quantity of each of these three line items. This multiple SKU carton or pallet is now complete. At this point we are ready to check the document. Click on the check button. This will validate the form to ensure that you have filled in all mandatory fields. If an error appears, click on it to locate it in the form. The field and error should be highlighted in yellow. Enter the missing information. Then check the document again. The check was successful, we may now send our document. If you are not ready to send, you can save the document. It is not necessary to check the Done button when you are finished filling out a form. Only if you are done creating documents and would like to prevent further documents from being created should you select the Done button. For this example, we will save the document. A draft of this document has now been saved successfully. To close the document, click on the X in the upper right hand corner. You may notice the Data Entry in Progress window remains open. Once you have finished working with the document, you can close this window. If you have saved a draft, it will be located in your Drafts box. If you sent your document, it will now be located in your Outbox. To edit a saved draft, click on the Next Steps button. Then select Edit. You will notice that your shipping labels are also now available. If this window appears, click the Run button. Maximize the window to view printing options. Here you can select laser or thermal printer. Under range to display, you will see the total number of labels. If you would like to print only the first page of labels, enter the range to display followed by the enter key, then hit print. To exit the labels, click on the X. This concludes the third video in the Webforms training series.